Hello, welcome back to the finale of my three-part villager series. If you haven't seen the other videos, I suggest you check them out using the links up here. Alrighty, let's go! So now you understand the complicated patterns and mechanics of villagers, as well as the correct environment and setup to trade with them, you still need to create an economy and then master that economy. Creating an economy is ultimately very rewarding, but it's going to take a lot of time and energy, so I would recommend you be in mid-game, which means you're past the point of having diamond tools. Believe it or not, your path to riches starts with sand. When cartographers level up to apprentice level, which is their second level, they now trade 11 glass panes for one emerald. That's a seemingly average trade, but it's actually really good. Because if you dig six sand, you can cook that in the furnace for six glass, and then turn the six glass into 16 glass panes in the crafting table. And now you can sell 11 of those 16 glass panes to get yourself the emerald. Meaning that six blocks of sand is equivalent to about one and a half emeralds which is a great trade because of how quickly you can dig sand. Of course, you'll need cartographers to make this happen in the first place. I would recommend about 8 to 10 cartographers, but you can start up with 3 and then build more as you go, which would mean 3 different cells with uh, cartography tables in each of them, and a villager as well. Once the villager gets the profession, you'll notice he's at novice level. To get him to apprentice level, just simply level him up with exactly 120 paper. And then, when he decides to level up, he'll be ready to trade. And now you're ready to get shoveling. From here on out, if you're pretty familiar with getting glass in Minecraft, the next part should be no problem. Just pop over to your local desert and get digging. And once you've got as much sand as you need or can carry, you can head back to your trading hall. Now you need to cook it all which you could do with just a few furnaces and some coal, but I'll eventually post a video that shows a really cool and efficient sand cooking or smelting machine. When some of the glass is done cooking, you can now put it into your crafting table, craft it up into glass panes, and then you can trade it all away to your eager to buy villagers. After trading it a few times, they'll run out of stock, but that's okay because you have other villagers to trade with and twice a day, villagers will decide to trade you again the item. So you could come back twice every day to trade more glass paints to these villagers, and as you improve your sand selling economy, you can even create more cartographers. If none of the running out of stock stuff made sense to you, you probably haven't watched my first video, so go check it out. Now that you have a steady income of emeralds, you can get spending. And the best way to spend emeralds is on enchantment books. Librarians can sell you any enchantment book in the game. What an enchantment book is, is a book that when applied to a piece of gear in the anvil will give that gear the benefit. In this case, giving efficiency 5 to the shovel will make it 5 times faster in terms of digging. Some enchantments I would recommend are the Unbreaking 3 enchantment, efficiency 5, protection 4, and mending. And I like these because they can be applied to multiple different pieces of gear to improve them, unlike maybe the channeling enchantment, which can only be applied to one piece of gear once. The librarian profession comes from the lectern, which is crafted like this. And remember, there has to be one librarian for every enchantment trade, meaning you'll need a new librarian for every new enchantment book. Alright, just get your basic villager in a cell, and make sure you have an axe and a lectern to do the rinse and repeating method, as well as enough emeralds and a book so that when you finally find the trade you want, which in my case will be efficiency 5, you can lock it in on the spot. Here we go. Okay, and there we have it, efficiency 3. You'll notice it's not efficiency 5, but this is okay, because a little known trick that you can do 
is if you buy two efficiency three books, you can combine them together in an anvil to create an efficiency four book. And then if you buy two more and combine the two efficiency four books, you now have an efficiency five book. So now that this villager's trade is locked in, you can get rid of the lectern, place a block back there. And now you have infinite efficiency five books. So now I can apply that to my shovel, shovel sand five times faster and get even more emeralds. Lastly, there are a few more things I'd like to talk about before this video ends. The first one is these guys, called Iron Golems. They will spawn naturally as your villagers begin to multiply, and you shouldn't mind them. They pretty much protect the villagers from anything dangerous, and they won't attack you unless you attack them first. A mob that will attack you, though, are these guys, called Pillagers. They will naturally spawn once you have a certain amount of villagers, and then try to attack your villagers. Luckily, your villagers are protected in the trading hall, but the thing that's most dangerous about these guys is that when you kill them, there will be one pillager that looks like this, called the Raid Captain. And when you kill him, you'll get the Bad Omen effect, which looks like this. And if you get too near to your trading hall with the Bad Omen effect, you will start a raid, which is when a whole bunch of bad stuff happens. The bottom line is, when you get Bad Omen effect, just get a cow and drink some milk so the effect will go away. The third thing is a reminder about baby villagers. When these two villagers breed and make a baby villager, you have to remember to coax him out of this cell and close the door behind him so that he can't occupy the third bed, which will make them not want to breed anymore. I also wanted to mention that you can give professions to the villagers in breeding cells so they could be even more useful. The fourth and final thing is a reminder about villagers. Enchantment books aren't the only cool thing that you can buy from villagers with emeralds. For instance, in the late game, I don't want to spend my time killing chickens or cows for their meat. So instead, I use the farmer profession at master level to sell me golden carrots, which is a great food source and relatively cheap once you're in the late game. And that's it. Congratulations on completing my epic trilogy. You've now learned about villagers, training halls, breeding, enchanting, and emeralds. So I hope you're happy. You're probably rich enough in emeralds to do this. I will be posting a tutorial on making that cool glass smelter, so watch out for that one. But for now, thank you for watching, and please leave a like. Also, one last tip. When you're hunting for new enchantment books, you might find a better price for an old enchantment book. When this happens... <laughs>